Hey everyone, Ben here, back in the iRacing Super Formula at Suzuka, and today we're going to find out how quick the top split really is. For now though, we're underway in a lower split race, starting P6, but the leader right up ahead of us now, Takahashi, has had a shocker and is falling back in the pack, and that's going to give me an opportunity as we hit the S's for the first time to get past him and up one spot. We're now following Kamura up ahead, and we're going to try and put the pressure on over the first part of this race. We're currently running P5, this is the battle for P4 and I'm going to have a chance as we end lap 2 to put the pressure on into T1 here where I'm going to use my boost and try and get alongside, Kamura defends to the inside, we've got a massive overspeed here, we're going to be side by side through the double apex T1 and into T2 but unfortunately just holds me off on the inside, fantastic racing there between the two of us, no contact, really good stuff but then later on, on the same lap, Kamura would lock up into the hairpin that would give me the chance to get down his inside and up into p4 and now it's all about putting the same kind of pressure onto Casilica up ahead who's holding the final podium position at this point in the race and you can see it looks like I'm a bit quicker he's pulled to the inside to defend I'm actually not close enough to make an attempt this time around so I'm not going to follow him out there I'm going to stick to the racing line and just coast through the corner but look at that he gets on the brakes or shifts down down a gear, one of the two mid corner and completely catches me out and I run in to the back of his car. That could have been a race ending incident for both of us and given I ran into the back of him I sort of feel like it's probably primarily my responsibility but I just didn't expect him to be so slow. You could see Kamura in the background there losing it in the battle with Takahashi and because I'm carrying damage now to my front wing I slipped behind Takahashi as well so we are now back in P5 but later in the race the leader Steinbild would make a mistake out front he would clip the curb in Degna 2 and essentially ruin his own race there and then on the final lap of the race Takahashi putting pressure on Redondo for the lead of the race but just carries too much speed in now that looks superficially similar to my incident but both I assure you in this instance were going flat out and I think Takahashi just carried too much speed in there he would retire from the race on the last lap and that would mean I would come home in P3 nursing a damaged car and holding off two drivers in close proximity behind me so not a bad first result from the week but things were about to get much tougher in race two we've got a 3.1k strength of field and i am starting the race in p15 i am though using a special livery for this race created by discord member tom andrews who won our japanese design competition and bagged himself a 20 dollar i racing voucher can i bag myself any kind of result in this top split field well let's find out as the lights go green and we're just conservative off the start some drivers off to an absolute flyer others into the wall in a matter of meters unbelievable that in the middle of the iRacing season still we're seeing so many off the start line incidents and another big incident into T1 there's at least one driver there off into the gravel another likely to be carrying damage and Iwata up ahead rejoining I think he got away without making any contact he had to take avoiding action though i think it was handel who was off into the gravel but we'll see that back on replay already then a number of drivers essentially out of this race i think i'm running still in p15 somehow we very nearly though get caught out into the degnas i just hold the car on the edge of the curb there you do not want to get up on that raised curb you will essentially get beached and run off into the gravel thankfully we were able to hold it but i am struggling with the car on lap one here you could see i was very deep into the hairpin there not up to temperature yet I've got to just calm down a little bit and just let the race come to me I was very very lucky not to get caught up in any of that off the line shenanigans or indeed into T1 as well so the main thing is yes we've got one X but we're carrying no damages another driver is off to the left hand side there that looked like it was Nogueira he must have looped it coming out of spoon so the drivers are falling right left and center here I'm making up positions just by keeping the car on track what's going to happen as we hit the heavy braking zone into the chicane at the end of lap one well look up ahead you're going to see Tabar get slightly loose on the exit and Mandamaker slams into him he pulls straight off into the pit lane so drama from the very start of this race right the way through lap one and we've gained a ton of positions let's take a look back at how all that unfolds 
unfolded then look to the right hand side the iron brew liveried car that's luke walker just lighting up the rear tires coming together with another driver and spearing into the barrier but there was another similar incident behind this is vetter on the left hand side just colliding with the wall there as the rear tires lit up he also collected danny campos and then heading down into T1, we're going to see Andreas Handel go side by side with Easton on the inside. The two would come together and Handel would play a very, very big price for that off into the gravel. And then later on in the lap, Nogueira, we saw him parked to the left-hand side at the exit of Spoon. And again, he's just asking too much of those rear tyres on lap one. And he spins out. And then finally, here's Tabar then. We're following him through the chicane. He's just going to get too close to Scarlet up ahead, he has to get on the brakes, he's loose and Mandamaker can't anticipate that coming through the exit of the corner and he crashes into his rear wing. So after a fast and frenetic opening to the race, we're now on to lap 3, back in the cockpit and we're up into P9, so we gained 6 positions off the start of the race just by keeping our nose clean and trying to avoid the carnage that was unfolding all around us. And now my mission is to try and get onto the rear wing of Indica Scarlet up ahead. The gap was around two seconds. I'm going to set about trying to close that in while also holding off any drivers behind who might be recovering from those first lap incidents. So it's all gonna just be about trying to get into my rhythm. You can see there we're into the 138s. I've got a lot more speed than that. I know that in the car, but it's taking me a little while this week at Suzuka to get the car up to temperature. It's tended to be by the middle of this sprint race format. By the time I've got the car into a window where I'm able to set representative lap times, I don't know if I need to alter my driving style to try and get more heat into the tires. It looks like other drivers can push earlier in the race than I'm able to. And you'll see the times do come down as we get through the race. But for now, I'm just trying to keep the pressure on here. As we get closer into the hairpin, you can see all Already, the gap is falling but it wouldn't be until lap 5 that I would finally get under a second away from Scarlet up ahead you can see though they've had a better exit from the final corner so I'm not going to be in a position to challenge into T1 this time around and actually it's a pretty good three-way race because Marty behind me is also within a second here as we come through T1 and into T2 again but look off to the left hand side infield there's a driver off there that's Demeda who's gonna just rejoin alongside wow for a moment there I thought he was gonna come right the way across the track and collide with us thankfully he saw us coming and was able to just stick to the left hand grass verge but that was very close and I had to get out of the accelerator there and that's allowed Scarlett to get away just a little bit and Vicente Marti to close in just a little bit as we go through the Degnas one more time and look at that in the rear view mirror Marty is off so he's made a big mistake there let's take a look back on replay as we follow Demela then under pressure from behind into T1 and what you'll see on the exit there is he just gets up on the curb it's enough to unsettle the rear very very small margins there and it's a high speed spin and as he rejoins wow there we come past with Marty in fairness to Demela he controls that very well but it was a bit scary in cockpit and then just a few corners later Marty takes too much of the inside curb into Degna 1 it pitches him out into the sand and Demela is able to get past so he will be the driver immediately behind me then looking to recover from that spin but as we rejoin the live action on lap 7 you can see I'm struggling now to recapture the initiative with Scarlett as we come through the chicane once again, ready to begin lap 8. Look up ahead, Scarlett's made a big mistake on exit there. I'm going to get on to my boost to try and put the pressure on into T1. The car just got loose on Scarlett there, very nearly lost the rear and into the pit wall. I'm not close enough to challenge into T1, unfortunately, but I've recovered all of the time that I lost there. And look at that, we're now right underneath the rear wing with only a handful of laps left in this race. So my opportunity to get one more position up in this race, get up into P7, is now. 
It's very challenging to follow through the S's. The dirty air from the car up ahead really does unsettle you going through those tight and twisty sections. But we're still within half a second as we hit the Degners. Nice line through there. Open up the entry to the next one and then get on the power as early as you can to try and put pressure on into the hairpin. The key here is going to be to remain within Scarlet's slipstream for the back end of this lap to try and then get alongside either into the chicane at the end of the lap or into the first corner of the next lap but it's all about holding close just behind the car up ahead through some of these corners where making a pass realistically isn't possible can we get a good exit then from Spoon and just sit within the slipstream you'll see as we're coming down the back straight here we will visibly close in on Scarlet here and that's all about the tow coming through 130R here then we're closing in all the time but we're not going to be close enough to make a move into the chicane even though we're better on the brakes and look at that we are right underneath the rear wing of Scarlet then as we come through to the end of this lap two more racing laps to go and we're going to see this through right the way to the finish here because I've got a very good chance of getting up into P7. Scarlet trying to break the slipstream then as we cross the start finish line once again. I follow them out towards the inside wall there to just try and maintain the pressure through T1 again. We both get a nice line there and it's going to be again just about following through the S's trying to put as much pressure on as possible. If I can just rattle them sufficiently then we might see Scarlet get offline through some of these corners and you can lose a bunch of time if you're offline and struggling to get the car pointed in to any of those corners unfortunately though they are dealing with the pressure very very well here and we are pretty evenly matched on pace it seems because I'm not able to close in through the first part of this lap but we are still within slipstream distance heavy on the brakes again into the hairpin then very neat and tidy from Scarlet we get a decent exit too and now it's going to be about using our boost because we've only got a full racing lap left after this so we're going to have the boost on now to the end of the race so is Scarlet it may well come down to who's got the most charge left in their battery we're going to find out I'm not sure I've got enough left to take us to the very end of the race but we're going to maximize it through these high speed sections you can see I'm up on my personal best lap time delta that's going to keep going as we get through 130R and we're maxing out the speed here the revs hitting the limiter heavy on the brakes into the chicane we're still very very close behind Scarlet here they again are just going to be a little bit more confident on the throttle coming out of the corner behind us there's big drama look at that behind Demeda coming together with Nogueira through the chicane that means I don't have to worry about pressure from behind Behind. I can just focus on the battle up ahead it's going to be p7 or p8 let's try and make it p7 as we on to the final lap here and you can see scarlet beginning to get a little bit loose through the s's there we've closed in quite a bit certainly more than on previous laps is the pressure finally beginning to tell they're very wide coming up the hill there any further out onto the curb there and i think they would have spanned the car but they get away with it as we come through the degners for the final time still pushing as hard as I can to try and close the distance but look at my dash I'm about to run out of boost as we come into the hairpin I'll get the benefit of it for one final time coming out of the low traction zone there but unfortunately we're about to lose it and it looks like Scarlet still has more left you can see the rear light there flashing on the car up ahead as we lose our overlays very very momentarily but they are still benefiting from the boost and this is ultimately going to be decisive I'm in the slipstream, I'm up on my PB so far, but because we don't have the benefit of the boost button, I'm going to fall back through the final bit of this lap. You can see the Delta going to go ahead into the red pretty soon. You can see the gap visibly extending to Scarlet up ahead. So unfortunately, we're just going to lose out. Scarlet ran out of boost too, but it was enough to hold on to P7. I'm going to come home in P8, but let's not forget this was a 3.1k strength of field, so this represents a really great result. But to answer the question, how quick is the top split in Super Formula, look at the lap times that the top drivers were running unbelievable pace 7k rated drivers and wow they are fast really enjoyable though i really really liked getting this car out on track here at suzuka 
a perfect match in many ways. If you want to see more Super Formula Racing on the channel, check out the video that's on screen now, and I will see you on the next one.